This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not e even worthy enough to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan River by John. When coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn asunder and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. celebrate today's Mass and offer this Holy Eucharist today together, let us make it our collective intention to remember our brothers and sisters in France who have been suffering so much pain, uh, not only those who have died, but the families and indeed the whole nation of France who has been shaken by this act of terrorism, and we as Americans know this feeling quite well. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of Jesus. It is a feast day that is very ancient and old in the church. Did you know that before Christians were celebrating Christmas, they were celebrating this feast day? Because the early Christians uh, realized the tremendous importance of this event, not only in the life of Jesus, but for the whole human race. And then it came as an afterthought, well, perhaps we should celebrate his birthday. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so we are participating in a very ancient tradition, and the second Sunday of January, we recall this uh, uh, very uh, important event in the story, in the narrative of our faith. And when we think of the baptism of Jesus, uh, it is important for us uh, uh, to realize a few things which I would like uh, in the next few minutes to, uh, to observe with you. First of all, as followers of Jesus and as people of faith, uh, and particularly as Catholics, we affirm the mystery that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. This is inexplicable to us. We cannot explain or comprehend this mystery, but we affirm and know this to be very true. And in this story of his baptism, if we pay attention very clearly, we can make a few observations. One is that Jesus came to the prophet John the Baptist. And John the Baptist at this time was seen as a revival of uh, a very important part of the Jewish religious experience, and that is of uh, the ancient prophets. And the ancient prophets were those who were overcome by the Holy Spirit of God, whatever that was. They weren't quite sure. And they would sing their poetic oracles, which were later recorded down in Scripture. In the first reading today, it comes from one of those prophets who lived uh, some seven or eight centuries before the time of Jesus, and that's the prophet Isaiah. 
And the message of the prophets to Israel um, was manif manifold. With, in other words, they had many different things to say to the people of Israel. But a constant recurring theme was this theme of anticipation of a chosen one who was to come into the world to fulfill the promise of God to the nation of Israel. And this chosen one would be recognizable because the Holy Spirit would be upon him and he would become the light in our darkness and he would give sight to the blind. In the second reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter is looking back upon his experience with his friend Jesus and he affirms in his message that Jesus in fact is the fulfillment of this prophetic promise and that Jesus went about after being baptized by John doing all kinds of good works and delivering people from all of the works of the devil. In other words, Jesus brought about healing when there was disease. He brought about peace when there was anxiety. He brought love to people who were experiencing the scourge of hatred and he brought people deliverance from fear. And so that is the message that Peter had to say in the second reading. In the gospel reading, we have a very simple account of Jesus' own experience. Religious experience is something that has been with human beings for a very long time. And it's important to recognize that when Jesus went to meet the prophet John the Baptist in the waters of the Jordan River, that he had a religious experience. It was a defining moment for him. He was not merely going through a ritual, a religious ritual, but he was also having a deep inward experience. Now, we can never know uh, or get into the mind of Jesus to know the state of his mind or to know his psychology or a sense of self-consciousness or his relationship with God. But at this moment, something very profound happened to him because as he was being baptized in the waters by the prophet, it was an occasion in which he had a tremendous vision of heaven and he heard a voice from his father and it was a defining moment for him. In some ways you could say that this was a convergent experience for Jesus. And you might think that is a rather uh, strange sounding thing. Why would Jesus, who is the Son of God, need a conversion experience? But we must never lose sight of the fact that he was fully human. And human beings have moments in their lives in which everything changes. The whole paradigm by which you see the world, the lens by which you observe things, can go through a radical change when you have a religious experience like what Jesus had. And this is an experience that is open to all of us. It is a deeply inward experience of the Holy Spirit. And from this moment on, Jesus begins his public ministry. He never performed any miracle before his baptism. It wasn't until he was baptized and he received the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon him that he was able to do the work that was set before him. In this vision, his identity was affirmed as the Son of God. And along with his identity, so was his mission, his life's mission affirmed. And this would have huge implications for the whole human race. Nothing would ever be the same, particularly in the human religious imagination. Jesus has become the source of inspiration for countless billions of people throughout history. And it's quite remarkable. And this is what we celebrate today. John the Baptist gave witness to Jesus. He was the prophetic voice that came from the, witness, uh, from, from the wilderness. And his witness was this. I baptize you with water. Which is a typical uh, purification rite that the ancient peoples used before you would enter into a sacred place or into the presence of the divine. John says, I baptize you with water as a visible sign of that which is to come. And I bear witness to that one who is coming into the world that I am not worthy to even to tie his shoes. I'm not even worthy to be his lowest servant. 
but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, what is most needful for us today is that we would receive from Jesus this experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The primary task of the church collectively and for us as Christians individually, we are told very clearly in the pages of the New Testament. That is, we are to give witness. We are to bear witness to the world of our own experience with God. Because if we can speak from our own first-hand experience of God, then we are able to give hope to others. And people who have hope, hearts are filled with faith, and they are set free to love. You've heard this message in so many times. Jesus had this experience. And in order for us to bear witness to Jesus, I too must have my own experience with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If I don't have an experience to bear witness to, then all I'm telling you is what others have told me. It's secondhand information. But we are called to bear witness, which means we must have firsthand experience. We must have our own encounter with the living Christ, the resurrected Jesus. And we do this by means of the Holy Spirit. And baptism is very important to this. Now, most of us, if we're Catholic, have been baptized long before we could even remember. And oftentimes, for many generations now, we have been giving the explanation of baptism, which is an explanation that I think is inadequate, that falls far short of the reality. For often you would hear that the reason we are baptized is so that the taint of original sin would be removed from our souls. How many have heard that? So we think of baptism as a cleansing rite. Well, that, that could very well be true at some level. But it is not the heart of the baptismal experience that we've had or that Jesus had. And our baptismal experience ought to be like that of Jesus. Baptism is not so much a removal of something unclean from your life, but rather it is the impartation of the Holy Spirit upon your life. So the day that you were baptized and you received the sacramental water in that moment and the prayers of the church interceding on your behalf, we believe and we affirm that the Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus at his baptism now has come upon you and has taken residence within your heart. Now, as life unfolds for us, it is up to us to respond to the working of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is always at work within the human heart whether we know it or not. It is the activity of the hidden God. And when we bear witness, it's not so much what we say with our words, but it's what we say with our lives. And so the Christian life is one of surrender to that Holy Spirit that total immersion, being filled with the Holy Spirit, because then we have a first-hand experience with God, and that is what transforms us. That is what transformed Jesus in his encounter with the prophet John, and it transforms us. And the more that we surrender to the Holy Spirit of God, the more the miraculous workings of God flows through our lives to the blessing of others. And so today, as we think of the baptism of Jesus, let us, let us make it our prayer. I surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit. Today, this second Sunday of 2015, let us now open our hearts as we renew our baptismal promises and as we renew our baptism with the blessing of holy water, let, it, let this be our prayer of dedication that we might become transformative in our world, a world that is overshadowed by darkness. May we be a light that brings peace and joy to the earth. That is how we should respond when we hear terrible news like we heard come out of Paris. Our response should not to be quick to act in violence again, but to act in the power of the Holy Spirit 
to bring hope and transformation and unity and peace to all of the world. This is the mystery that we celebrate today. Let us now stand together as we renew our baptismal promises. Do you reject Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty promises? I do. 